um, a study telling us what, I mean, I think you and I certainly had already known and what a lot of our, my listeners would already have known as well, that actually mandatory lockdowns, they really don't save very many lives in terms of COVID lives. And as this study actually also points out, they may well cause more deaths because people are stuck indoors. And of course, we know, you know, people not being treated for cancer and heart attacks and suicides, mental health problems long term. The long term death toll may be greater. Um, what do you make of this study? Yeah, it, it's a very important study. As you say, it's uh, bringing together actually over 30 other studies looking at the impact of lockdowns. Um, and other interventions on COVID mortality. As you say, it finds a very small impact. All these studies are, are estimates, so we can't rule out that there was some small impact. We can't rule out that there was no impact at all. But I think it's important because it, it, it comes as a surprise to, to many people. As, as you say, we, we've had this evidence before. We've yeah. seen much of this evidence saying lockdowns don't have much of an effect. But people wonder why that is. And I think one of the reasons this paper points out is that actually people make their own decisions and they decide to change their behaviour. When they see infections yeah. going up, people at more risk take more care. Yeah. And so you see um, deaths eventually decreasing anyway. Of course, there's a lag so that you can understand why ministers sometimes panic. But yeah. we know now that in all three of the, UK, of the English lockdowns, infections were decreasing before the lockdown was implemented. Yeah, that's not so, up for debate, is it? And I've discussed that with quite a few government ministers and with uh, medics who, who say that's not the case. But even Chris Whitty has admitted that in, before the first lockdown. You can clearly see when deaths peaked and when infections, we weren't doing much testing then, when infections must have happened. And they peaked a week before we went into lockdown because people were, were basically seeing what was happening. They were fearful and they took necessary precautions. Yeah, it's a little bit harder for the first lockdown because you say we didn't have so much data on mm. infections, but I think we can be fairly confident um, infections were going down before the lockdown started. I think when you go back to the lockdown last year in January, we know for absolute certain all the indicators told us that infections had been going down before. So people were changing behaviour, but also remember lockdowns can have unintended consequences. So with lockdowns, we're encouraging people to stay at home rather than go outside for an infection which is much more infectious in the home. We know yeah. that many more infections are in the home and you're forcing people to spend more time, sometimes in multi-generational households. We did things like we, we locked up playgrounds for children. We kept the uh, the, the takeaways open, of course. We yeah. kept the, uh, the off-licenses uh, open, but we shut down gyms. So it's not perhaps a surprise that lockdowns also had very many adverse consequences. And of course, you very mentioned... different consequences for different people. As that, I've used the quote many times, as a New York commentator pointed out, it wasn't. We never had a lockdown. We, uh, you know, middle class people stayed at home while working class people brought them stuff. Um, there were actually millions and millions of people who were out working every single day. Um, and of course, they were then not allowed to be out of their homes when they came home from work, unless of course you worked for Number Ten Downing Street, you could be partying every night of the week. Um, they would go home to their family at home and be stuck indoors, legally not allowed out more than an hour a day. Um, so and then passing those infections on. But quite apart from that, you, you're looking at the, the long term damage um, in terms of people having their cancer treatment cancelled, people not going to A&E uh, with um, heart attacks. And, and we know the long term impact of that is going to be off the scale. We already know about, you know, there are tens of thousands of people who will die earlier and because of their cancer was not treated soon enough and hundreds of thousands who didn't actually get referred for treatment, quite apart from the fact that people have, by and large, put on weight and they have drunk more. And those two things will mean that people don't live as long. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. And we, we've got to be careful to separate out things that would have happened because of COVID yeah. and because of infections itself, which, of course, may have made it harder for hospitals to provide treatment for everyone. But there are also direct impacts of lockdown, some of which you've just, just mentioned. Yeah. Another one would be the increase in gambling, uh, the, yeah. the economic hit. And we know economic hits um, and people losing their jobs and not having enough money can lead to depression and to uh, ultimately to suicide. So that there is actually some research looking not just at COVID deaths, but the impact of lockdowns, not COVID, but lockdowns, the interventions by government on total excess mortality, excess deaths. So looking at everything in the round. And that research, there's not so many papers looking there, but that research suggests that lockdowns at best had um, no, led to no overall reduction in deaths, but yeah. probably led to a small increase in deaths. There's so some studies in the UK yeah. 
and in the Met and in America looking at this. So yeah, you do have this unfortunate situation where it looks like lockdowns, everything people went through and thought they were doing it for the right thing may not have even saved any lives overall, yeah. and but caused this huge damage elsewhere. And exactly. I think that's quite hard for people to, to take in. You can understand why people are resistant to this. Yes, sort of thing ministers don't want to admit to it. And people who supported it don't want to admit it. I mean, again, I, I never thought we should have locked down sooner back in March 2020, but I you know I supported the, the decision when it happened. I trust, foolishly trusted the scientific advice at the time, which went against all of our pandemic planning and, in fact, planning and, and World Health Organization advice. Um, uh, but very soon realised, oh, hold on a minute, this is this is this is crazy. This is we are going to be costing lives. The long term mental health, physical health impacts that I think even if people would have chosen to be in at home where they could are going to be so much greater. The educational impact. I've always been consistent. Schools, should, in my view, should never have closed. They didn't close in Sweden for under 16 year olds um, and they've not got a higher death rate than us. So, uh, but so much of this was down to that Imperial College uh, 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 modelling by, by Neil Ferguson, who I, I'm still flabbergasted by the fact that people are still listening to this man and people give him um, any any uh, forum or platform at all because he's so no one else proven to be that wrong about every single thing should ever be in the, uh, allowed to influence government policy in my view. But their their predictions were sort of 500,000 deaths. Dominic Cummings running into the prime minister saying you've got to lock down, you've got to lock down, even though Sage had never even considered locking down. Our policy was basically the Swedish policy until that point. That was based on the idea that if you did absolutely nothing, if people carried on living their lives completely as normal, or you locked down, that was the choice, 500,000 lives. But the reality is people weren't living their lives as normal. I already, I mean, I'm, I was called a COVID denier. I was already not hugging people, not shaking hands. Uh, I was uh, sanitising in, the, in the, the, the desk. We were stopping guests coming in. We were already doing what we could to minimise contact. And most people I know were already doing that. We advised my, my parents, uh, you know, their 70s, not to travel to uh, uh, my brother's 40th birthday, where I ended up catching COVID because we said it's too big a risk to you. Families were sensible. They used common sense. They, they they were moral, they were doing the right thing. And these models are all based on the idea that we're all idiots and we'll all just carry on as normal. But we would have actually made a rational choices about what was safe to do and what wasn't. Yeah, the, the modellers do have a lot to answer for. But I think one of the frustrations for me is that even though those mistakes were made back in March uh, 2020, lessons weren't learned. So even before Christmas this year, we had the same thing from the modellers, predicting up to um, 6,000 deaths per day, something which, you know, didn't pass the most basic sense check. Yeah. So the, the fact that lessons weren't learned and the models weren't adjusted to take account of behavioural change is a real frustration. In the end, though, it's ministers who make decisions. And, OK, perhaps you can understand a little bit more the panic when they're given that information back in March 2020. Yeah. You know, when you in introduce Plan B back in November this year, which is not, not so disastrous as lockdowns, but still has very significant consequences for certain sectors, and caused perhaps oh you know uh, overly much of a, a, a panic. I think you do have to look at decisions by government ministers. They're really the ones do. In the, in the end to uh, impose these things on us, and it's time that they learnt the lessons and said, well, look into the future because cases will go up again. There'll be another variant. Yep. We'll see a big surge of infections probably at some at some point, and government needs to say now. We know now that lockdowns cost more than any possible benefit they can give. We will never resort to lockdowns, business closures, shutting schools. Shutting, um, shutting pubs again. Here, here to that. 7.31 is the time. Huge thanks to Professor David Payton.